So if you're buying your first pair of flat pedaled mountain bike shoes or you want to upgrade to something different and you don't want to waste $150 on a pair of shoes that you might not like, well, I've spent close to $1,000 and tried a couple of different mountain bike shoes over the past two years. One of these shoes is absolutely awesome and one of them is a massive dud. You're gonna wanna make sure that you avoid that one at all costs. So stick around, I'm gonna go over all these in kind of a lot of detail. So if you're interested in the details, stick around, watch this. Oh, and by the way, I'm gonna give away one of these shoes when I hit a thousand subscribers. Any one that you want, not one of these used ones, but a brand new one, a thousand subscribers when I get there, whatever one you want. So let's get into it. All right, we've got the 510 Freeride Pro. These are probably everybody's favorite mountain biking shoe. Maybe some of your first mountain biking shoes, and you're probably still wearing them today. I've since moved on from these shoes, but they do have some great features and a difference from all the other ones that might work best for you. So first, what everybody knows about these shoes, the Stealth Rubber. This is probably what brought everybody to the shoe since they first came out. They were the stickiest shoe on the market. Today, I would say most shoe brands have a rubber that's just about as sticky as these are, and some of them have better durability. Let's zoom in on the sole on these so you can take a look at the durability. All right, six months on the 510s, six months on the Etni. Can you tell the difference? These 510s have way, way, way more damage to the sole than these do. These to me have held up much better. And I've had these shoes for this, I rode these shoes for the same amount of time. So for my money, the sole wins on the Etni's culverts and they're just as sticky. But here's the thing that I do like about the shoe. The toe box is actually quite a bit wider than a lot of the other shoes that I have. And I have a wider foot, so these shoes actually fit quite well. So for me, the feel is great, the durability wasn't the best. One thing talking about stiffness though is, I originally thought these had a really stiff toe box and they do right on the front. So you can see once I move over here, I can push it in. When I push down the front, I can't. On the side, I can. I like the way that the shoe looks. That's originally why I got it. I also knew about the rubber and that it was a great all around shoe. But for me, I've since moved on. And the shoe that I moved on to after that is the Etnies Culvert. Okay, so I talked about the Freerider Pro being a pretty dang good spring and summer shoe because of the perforations and how it kind of lets the heat dissipate out. This shoe doesn't have any of those. There's actually no perforations. It shows perforations here, but it actually doesn't go through. It's just an aesthetic thing. This shoe has been my go-to spring and winter shoe. It has essentially been waterproof for me. So when I went through and had multiple splashes onto my feet, my feet would end up getting soaked at the end of the day with the 510s, but with the culverts, that never actually ended up happening. So it offered just enough uh, water resistance to kind of allow my feet to stay dry. Cool thing is, I actually didn't find my feet overheating even on warmer days that were in the high 60s and 70s. Now, when we get into the 70s and 80s of the summer, I likely won't be wearing these shoes. But luckily, I have another pair that I'll show you in a minute that I will be wearing. One thing that I really do love about this is this little pocket for the laces. And if you're anything like me, you like to have things kind of neat and tidy and you don't really want your laces flopping around. A lot of us have gotten used to stuffing the laces, you know, under the, the laces on our, our tongue and kind of keeping them in that way. But I think this was a really smart thing for Etnies to do. The feel of this shoe is great. It's got stiffness to it. So on those long pedally days when you're really getting into it, you don't feel like the bottom of your foot's getting worn out and sore and tired and hurting. Uh, that's the one thing that I really do like about these shoes. The rubber is sticky, it's durable, it's stiff, and you can put a lot of power down. 
And for my money, I'm gonna get a lot more use out of these than the 510s because the sole's gonna last a lot longer. The most useful thing for me was the lack of perforations for the winter, the finsulate, and the gusset on the tongue that keeps a lot of the dirt and debris and rocks out of your shoe because there's nothing getting in between the tongue and the side of your shoe here because of that gusset. So the sole lasts longer than the 510s. I love that. I'm gonna get more use out of these shoes. They still look great because of the polyurethane uh, uh, outer sole that they have. And I think they look great. So let's move on to the next shoe that I'm currently wearing and that I love. This is the Fox Union. It's an all new flat pedal shoe and I'm absolutely in love with it. Okay, I'm a little bit biased. I am, I'm not gonna lie. I love the way the shoe looks. I love the way the shoe fits. And the sole is grippy as hell. So for me, this has become one of my favorite shoes and the 510 is slowly fading away as a distant memory. I've owned two pairs of those over the past year and a half. Uh, and I, I almost exclusively rode those for the, the longest time. And uh, after a few days of riding these, these are absolutely my favorite. For spring and summer, the amount of perforations on the side and the top have allowed my foot to breathe much better. The amount of space that's in the toe box is very similar to the 510. And the 510 has one of the widest toe boxes out of, out of a lot of the shoes that I've worn. And I actually prefer a wide toe box. One thing I can't necessarily speak to out of experience is durability. But what I can do is talk about some of the features of the shoe and talk about the durability of the Etnies Culvert, which I found to be actually have a more durable sole than the 510. Um, and how this kind of stacks up against the Etnies uh, versus the 510. One thing that this shoe does have that these do not have is this harder uh, welded uh, rubber piece that actually provides a heck of a lot more protection than the other uh, toe caps have. So that's something that I really do like about this. You also notice that there isn't any stitching along here. It's actually all glued or welded together as they say. Um, and then finally, uh, to keep this as short as possible, but I hope that you guys are uh, really interested in this information that I'm giving, the uh, actual construction of the upper part of the shoe. This is a all rubber construction. For me, I definitely put this shoe uh, higher than the 510 Freeride Pro. So what I will say is this, these are my two new favorite shoes. This is my favorite spring and summer shoe because it does have the water repellency when you have, you know, some, some light splashing and maybe some mud, uh, but you don't necessarily care about that during the spring and summertime. And it has the very hard toe cap. This has a softer toe cap, but it still does offer some protection. You can see I've had quite a few uh, scuffs and scrapes there up against rocks and, uh, you know, roots and stuff like that. However, I haven't had any damage to my foot so far. That's one long winded way to say that because of my experience with these two shoes, I have no question about the durability of these shoes. However, I still will give you a six month review after I ride these and bash them up as hard as I possibly can. But as far as I can tell, the, the construction is great. It has a tough toe cap that won't be bashed up as uh, easily as these will. Uh, it has the same material on the sole and the upper is actually, it seems to be one single uh, rubber upper as compared to the action new buck of these two that have multiple pieces with stitching on it. So this shoe, uh, you know, and it's Fox, it's, they're not new to the game. Um, they are new to the shoe game, but they aren't new to uh, the manufacturing and outerwear game. So I think they know what they're doing here. Finally, I've got the Crank Brothers Stamp Speed Lace. Now, I thought I would absolutely love this shoe. I thought it looked pretty good. I like the idea of Speed Lace. Another thing that I thought was interesting about this shoe is that they have the match system. And what they essentially did was build a shoe around their uh, stamp pedal that is uh, pretty popular. Of course, they say you can use this with any other pedal. I always use the one-up pedals and, and it worked just fine. You know, they have the MC2 rubber, which is their brand. It, they, don't have, they haven't partnered with Michelin or, or Vibram or anybody else, as far as I know. And um, it was pretty sticky. 
The only problem I had with this shoe, and I'll do some close-ups and uh, compare it to the rest of these, was that if you have a wider foot or even a foot with any sort of volume, I felt like the toe box was a small set of the rest and it had the most amount of padding. So it constantly felt like it was pulling my foot down into the sole. And you'd think that would be a good thing, maybe if you have a clipless pedal. But the problem was after a while, it would really wear out my foot. So let's do a quick close up and I'll show you a comparison so you can decide if these might be right for you. All right, so what I wanna demonstrate for you right now is to show you that while they do have a very similar width, you can see they're almost just as wide in the widest parts of the toe, the stamp actually loses volume so quickly through here that it becomes really constrictive pretty much everywhere in the toe box. So while you do have the width, you can see it pulls in so hard here that that compresses your pinky toe and kind of like the outside arch of your foot. Whereas with the Fox Union, it maintains more volume up towards the top of your foot, so you don't feel as constricted. So after riding these and even wearing them just for a little bit, I just felt it. Like I, I felt the shoe the entire time I was wearing it versus the Union. I put on the shoe and you kind of forget that you're wearing it after a while. But this the shoe, I couldn't get it out of my head that it was like suction cup to my foot and it began to become kind of painful. So I would say this is for a narrow footed person. Like this isn't even for a regular size nine, uh, regular width person, unless you love to have your shoes like absolutely constricted over your, your foot. Um, but after long rides, it becomes painful. I really don't like talking negatively about products and it's, I don't really have anything against Crank Brothers. I wanted to love these shoes. I thought they looked great, they pedaled well, the rubber was sticky, so there are very good aspects of this shoe. I like the speed lace design, um, you know, I really wanted to like this shoe when I saw it, but whenever other shoe fits true to size and fits well, um, and one of them doesn't, is it me or is it the shoe? All right, so I hope that's kind of giving you a rundown of my two current favorite mountain biking shoes right now, the Etnies Colbert Mid and the Fox Union. These are great for winter and early spring. These are gonna be great for later spring and summer. The reason why I like these, the perforations, the sticky rubber, the great aesthetics, and the solid upper, as well as the super stiff toe cap that goes all the way around the sides. The reason why I like this is the lack of the perforations and the 3M Fensilin. So in the winter, your foot stays a little bit warmer. It doesn't have the perforations, so you're not getting as, lot, as much water intrusion into your shoe, and you stay a lot more dry. So these are the two shoes that I absolutely love. I used to absolutely love this shoe. It was my favorite, but it's being, being replaced by this. Uh, unfortunately, the durability of the sole is just no longer there because I think the rest of the competition has finally caught up. But again, if you have a super wide foot and none of these shoes work for you, you can still rock this 510. It's a great shoe. If you have a super thin foot, maybe go with this one. Super wide foot, go with this one. If you're like me, have a regular size nine foot or any regular size foot, these two are absolutely killing it right now. Um, and these would be the ones that I recommend. So, I wanna get a thousand subscribers, all right? Maybe you'll choose one of these two. I don't know if you're a skinny foot, guy or a wide foot guy maybe you'll choose one of these but either way i'm gonna buy a shoe send it off to you so subscribe and i really appreciate it um let me know what shoe you pick appreciate it thanks guys